The initial casting description that was sent out in 2004 had a Jim Nelson instead of Jim Halpert, Big Keith, a British office character that eventually became Kevin, and Anton, a dwarf or midget mentioned in the British version who they discussed having Peter Dinklage come in to read for. The office wasn't even close to being successful that first season. Every episode did worse than the previous, and the entire production staff moved on to new projects assuming the office was over. President of NBC Kevin Riley fought for a second season, but could only get six episodes ordered at half budget. Everyone had to take pay cuts. Then the 40-year-old virgin released, turning Steve Carell into a huge movie star. The Office aired after My Name is Earl, which gave it a huge lead in audience, and a bunch of the cast spent their background time on the show communicating with fans on MySpace, building a strong online community. Most importantly, The Office became a showcase for iTunes' new downloadable TV service, which made it a huge hit with the younger market, one that continues to this day. Creed was meant to fill the background, but when the Halloween episode came around, they had to find someone for Michael to fire who hadn't been a big part of the show. It came down to Devin or Creed, and Creed had made some waves for his quirky personality and backstory. Without even knowing if he could act, they gave him a six and a half page script opposite Steve Carell. Creed was very aware that this was his shot, and nailed the scene despite lines being rewritten the day of. After his performance, the consensus was, Creed's a genius. Of course, he'd become an eccentric fan favorite who had a moment or two in every episode. In the beginning of the series, Jim was the only talking head that had a view to the outside. Everyone else's interviews would take place facing inside the office. The idea was that the view outside represented more of a future and possibility of escape. And when Pam and Jim's relationship finally blossomed in season 4, she got her own window. There's a widespread misconception that The Office was largely improvised, and many of the actors did come from an improv background. They also fielded one of the most talented writing teams in the business, and according to the actors, it was 90% scripted, it was 98% scripted, and 100% scripted. You're not there to revise it, you're there to execute it. Now after the scene was acted to script, there'd be a chance to improvise, mostly from Steve Carell and Rain Wilson. Everybody besides Steve Carell pretty much stuck to their lines. Thousands of ideas never made it to film. Greg Daniels wrote a Pet Day episode. There was one called Premonition, where someone had a dream that someone died on the way home, so no one wanted to leave work. One where Phyllis goes through menopause and sets the thermostat so low that Angela freezes to her desk. A storyline where Jim loses Pam in a poker game. And one where Michael accidentally crucifies himself on his garage door after playing basketball with Jim. He's left there all night and comes into work feeling very Christ-like. Here Comes Trouble had a storyline where Andy and his buddies killed one of their friends in college when they were all super drunk and he's unwittingly been part of a murder silence pack. Greg Daniels had Roy showing up to Jim and Pam's wedding on a white horse to win her back. Dwight eventually takes the horse and jumps it into Niagara Falls. The camera crew being revealed was always planned, and one idea was that the original British office creators, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, were the ones behind the camera. Jake Lacey and Clark Duke were brought in for what was planned to be a season 10 office reboot, featuring a new cast, until Greg Daniels and company decided to end things in season 9. And head of NBC, Ben Silverman, wanted Parks and Rec to be an office spin-off, possibly introducing Leslie Nope as Andy Bernard's girlfriend as a lead-in to the new series. Years before The Office, Warren Lieberstein, Toby's brother, was going to an important meeting with fellow writer Halstead Sullivan. As they walked through the marble floor lobby on a sunny day, Warren went to throw his gum away. When he stepped away from the trash can, he fell through the floor and plunged into a koi pond. Does this sound familiar? His agent texted him after. I heard he made a big splash at the meeting. When it came time to film, Steve Carell asked, Is this even believable? Can anyone possibly believe that I fall into a koi pond? And Toby said, It happened to Warren. The gas station where Jim proposed to Pam was by far the most complicated and expensive shot in office history. They had nine days to scout, design, build, and shoot a gas station rest stop with a four-lane parkway. It was filmed behind a Best Buy in Glendale, California, and was merely a facade with multiple construction cranes holding up water tankers and hiring 35 stunt drivers, it cost $300,000 to produce. You no doubt remember this intro, it's the punchiest one of the series, and that's because NBC had this episode follow Super Bowl 43 and wanted to lock in those 98 million viewers. 
The bizarre movie within the show exists because NBC executives wanted a big guest star, and Greg Daniels didn't want Matt Damon or Ben Affleck in Scranton. So they compromised and got Jack Black and Jessica Alba in a movie that the characters would watch in the show. John Krasinski was offered to star in George Clooney's Leatherheads, his biggest role yet. But it required him to shave his trademark moppy hair. He was contractually obligated to keep his look, but John did it anyway and had an extremely expensive wig fashioned. It appears he first used a wig in Cocktails, late in season 3. Afterwards, he went to talk to Greg Daniels about it, who said, John, I'll know if it's a wig. You can't fake that kind of thing. Then Krasinski removed it, and a surprised Daniel said, you win. Steve Carell wanted to stay till the end, but NBC never contacted him. It was managed so poorly. This was when the network lost its ability to manage talent for a while, whether it was the Conan Leno situation or losing Carell. The network executives at the time were Jeff Zucker and Bob Greenblatt, and their recounting isn't exactly reassuring. I vaguely remember having conversations with Steve, but I don't remember any details. I can't remember the sequence of events. I'm telling you, Steve wanted to stay. His manager contacted them and said he's willing to sign another contract. It appears we have NBC leadership to blame for this. As mentioned, meeting the documentary crew had always been planned. They found the most realistic option would be that Pam's boom guy had fallen in love with her over the course of a decade. They called Brian Whittle, her actual boom guy, into audition for the role of himself, which he didn't get, though he did get the part of Annoyed Parent earlier that episode. NBC wants a reboot. This isn't just a rumor, it's absolutely being talked about by NBC. If Greg wanted to do a reboot, they would do it in a second. It's a sandcastle an inch from the water. It's coming. And Greg Daniels in an email said, NBC wants it. I'm thinking about it. I just don't know. 